All right, so I teased it there. Let's get to our interview with Josh Bertaccini. Really going to like this one. Razorback fans went on a little deep dive here on uh, just what a terrific season it's been for the Arkansas Razorbacks and what the fans are talking about there in Northwest Arkansas. All right, hey, well, we're pleased once again to be joined by my buddy Josh Bertaccini, host of the Red Zone with JB92 won the ticket, Northwest Arkansas. Give Josh a follow at Red Zone 921. JB, how you doing, my man? I'm great, Mike. How you doing, my guy? Ooh, man, now that, uh, you know, the dust has settled and Arkansas just whipped up a Penn State, I'm doing great because I, I feel validated. I know you've been high on the hogs all season. Uh, you know, nationally, people, some people still look at it as, as a damn laughing stop there in northwest Arkansas, but they ain't laughing now, are they? No, they're not only not laughing, but I think they've raised their whole expectation level for this program, Mike. I mean, you were optimistic about this team before the year. I was optimistic. I don't think any of us were nine wins optimistic. So mm-hmm. I don't want to say a bowl game was that important when you're not competing for a national championship or in a New Year's Day six, Michael. But, I mean, it was the capper on a season that saw Arkansas come back from the dead and get itself back on the map. And now you got Sam Pittman asking for a $50 million contract. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's okay. I, I was going to ask you about that in just a second. But, you know, could you imagine here about two years ago, you're hiring Sam Pittman. Everybody's laughing at you. You're hiring this damn offensive coordinator, or excuse me, offensive line coach that's never been a head coach. And yet, you know, let's, then we go to the bowl game now, two years later. He's basically comparing Rice. I don't know if you caught – I'm sure you caught that. Basically comparing Penn State, led by James Franklin – who many people have as a top 10 coach in the country, he's comparing right. his program to freaking Rice. And he's absolutely right. I mean, they they just – it it looked like a, a warm-up game before the SEC. I mean, how stunned are you? How quick they, they turn this thing around? I mean, I'm surprised, Mike. I think that's a great question by you. Like, not whether Sam Pittman was going to do it, right? I love how you phrased that. Really, could Arkansas do it quickly? And I think, again, another spot where – this is not going to make me look good today, Mike. Another spot where I was wrong. I thought – at least traditionally, it takes three, four re- recruiting cycles, right, mm-hmm. to rebuild a program, to get your guys in there. But I think what we're seeing, we were talking about this here on 92 on the ticket this morning on our morning show, I think what you're seeing is with the transfer portal, with the early signing, with a lot of guys trying to speed up high school credits and get themselves eligible early or on the back end having an extra year or two to work with, I think you can turn programs around a little quicker. I mean, I don't know how else to explain this, but – something that I thought would take three, four, five years. Looks like it's taken Sam Pittman two or three years. And I know we'll look ahead before we're done, Mike, but I don't think this rebuilding project has peaked out even close to where it can get yet. No, and I, I really do believe that, uh, you know, this started last off season. I believe it, it was either Christmas Eve or Christmas when Grant Morgan said, hey, I'm coming back. I'm going to be a super senior. And you just had so much buy-in from this team last off season. It translated – onto the field and I think that helps a program like Arkansas who you know for being honest here they don't have the talent of an Alabama or a Georgia but what they've got is they've got seniority they've got players that are in the program for four or five now six seasons in, in some rare cases and I think we're seeing that played a huge huge advantage for Arkansas in SEC play and we're already starting to see it with with guys like Dalton Wagner coming back uh, I, I just think that's going to continue to be the case for Arkansas in the years to come under Sam Pittman, don't you? I do. I do. And I, I think what we're going to see now is kind of like building off your point, like offensive line play continuing to get better and better, not only from recruiting, but from mechanics and from development. I mean, Sam Pittman's known for this, right? Making offensive lines into behemoth forces for teams. And again, it's not there yet, but you're talking about an offensive line at Arkansas this year that was mostly recruited and brought in by a previous regime, albeit with a couple of transfers. But at the same time, by the end of the year, Arkansas was running the ball about as well as anybody in the country. And you're Mm -hmm. talking about a team that down the stretch ran it well against Alabama, ran it well against LSU. And then obviously in the bowl game, ran it down 10 stakes throat to win the Outback Bowl in the second half, six yards a carry for 360 yards. Mike, you or I probably could have gotten a few yards with the holes that were wide open out there. So, I'm very optimistic about the O-line moving forward. And I know you're going to ask me about K.J. Jefferson, but I think you can make an argument. He was as valuable to his team this year 
as any quarterback on any team in the country, and that's including Bryce Young at Alabama. Mm. Now, there's so many highlights from this season, you know, going back to Texas and Texas A&M, so many streaks were snapped, so many rivalries, one way. Heck, we got every uh, trophy we can have down there in, the, in, in Fayetteville right now. Uh, when you're looking back, you're telling your grandkids about the legend of Sam Pittman. What, <laughs> what's the thing that, that is going to stand out to you the most from the season we just had here? You know, I just I, I'm going to go to KJ Jefferson first. Traylon Burks got all the pubs right as the game-breaking wide receiver. I think we're all still turning our heads after that touchdown against Alabama, 70 yards to the house. And you know, Burks was incredible. Put on one of the greatest single-season wide receiver shows, frankly, Michael, that we've ever seen at Arkansas. And Arkansas has a pretty good history of wide receivers. So Burks was great. Offensive line we've already talked about in running game was really good. And it was good with young guys. Guys will be back next year, Mike. Dom Johnson, A.J. Green, you know, Rocket Sanders. These guys are all coming back. And, uh, and that's got to give you a lot of optimism going into next year. But the true story of 9-4 for Sam Pittman this year was his belief in K.J. Jefferson. You know, before the year, there were a lot of skeptics, mm-hmm. a lot of people who thought he couldn't be the guy for a full 12 game. He's not a good enough passer. He doesn't move quickly enough. And you know what? I'm not going to say this guy's a finished product, but wow, seems like he got better every single week. And I know that's kind of cliche, but it's not a cliche when it's the truth. After October 9th, he didn't throw an interception again until the bowl game against Penn State. This guy a 21 to 4 PDI and T ratio, 67% completion percentage, not to mention one of the leading rushing quarterbacks in the country, rushed 145 times at five yards of carry. So, K.J. Jefferson, I hate that phrase, he carried the team on his back, Mike, because, again, it was not a one-man show, and football never is. Mm -hmm. But this guy was a rock star this year. He played hurt. He was a leader. And without him, this team is probably the opposite of eight and four in the regular season. So, I think the real story of this season, Sam Pittman getting his team to buy in and making the transition to quarterback – and now Arkansas is the guy in the preseason Heisman shortlist next year, Mikey. Yeah, and, you know, it was not that long ago we were hearing, you know, he's gained too much weight. He looks like he's out of shape. Uh, 24-7 sports had him as the worst quarterback in the SEC. Uh, he looked a little shaky in the opener. You're going into this huge Texas game. Many people calling for Hornsby to, you know, we got to insert him in the lineup to see what it, what we've got. Now it's com- we've completely flipped that on, on its head. And, and just like you said, that gives Arkansas so much momentum because they're going to have one of the best quarterbacks, not only in the SEC, but the entire country. And who knows, you know, who's going to enter this transfer portal. I, I know Arkansas is already having success there, but who knows who goes in there that, uh, you know, with K.J. Jefferson on your roster – maybe that, that makes Arkansas an, even more of an attractive option this offseason, don't you think? I think it has to be, right? And I think it has to be for, you know, incoming potential transfers and for potential recruits this year. But, you know, really the talk around here, Mike, and I'm not trying to scoop the message boards here in Razorback Lane. they got enough folks trying to scoop them online. But, you know, I pay attention. I hear the, the hubbub out there, and I talk to people. And, you know, I'm not going to say it's a verified deal, but Arkansas is – been pretty aggressive so far reaching out to some juniors out there some high school quarterbacks who are pretty highly touted nationally a couple of guys who aren't even from the south and so when's the last time arkansas unless it was a transfer who was literally looking for a way out when's the last time that they were a prime destination for blue chip high school quarterbacks now i'm not saying they are yet i'm not saying they are yet but if kj jefferson can duplicate this kind of year mike go in eight nine games again maybe ten and really establish that you can be a Heisman contender at Arkansas at quarterback, and then he goes pro next year, you're going to have a lot of quarterbacks out there who are licking their chops for a chance to come in and sling the rock for Sam Pittman in years four and five. So I think the future is bright at quarterback, and I think K.J. Jefferson elevating that position, credit to Kendall Bryles for his help in the development too, it's only going to bode well for the future. Mm-hmm. Now, looking forward to next season, I'm, I'm already starting to hear it. And, I, you know, I can save the listeners a lot of the offseason storylines because this, this is what they're going to be saying at Media Days. This is what uh, is going to be saying all over the airwaves at the SEC Network. Love the job Sam Pittman's doing. He's doing a great job. But this schedule, you know, Arkansas cannot conquer it. And I've, I've heard that two years in a row now, and that's been proven wrong. 
you're opening against Cincinnati. You're playing Bobby Petrino's coming to town. You're playing yeah. Hugh Freeze. I mean, this this really is uh, an epic, epic schedule here. You got South Carolina week two. Uh, and now I was listening to the red zone with JB and oh, jb has got Arkansas going 12 and oh, how about it? <laughs> Mike, you made my day with that. I love I knew I had an online listener that I knew I had you. I thought that was you listening this morning. No, <laughs> so, um, you know, that was, we were having fun with it and I was ripping through the schedule, but in all seriousness, Mike, I mean, there's a chance for Arkansas to have a really special year next year. And yes, this schedule's as tough as you just said. And no, I don't have to explain to you the gauntlet of the SEC West. I just think, you know, talking about toughness to schedule is something teams do when they don't win games, mm-hmm. you know. Like when you're Arkansas for four or five years and you're a joke at the bottom of the league, one of the only things you can hold on to is, well, at least we're playing a tough schedule, right? Mm-hmm. But when you're winning, all of a sudden, those tough games look like winnable games. And the real truth of whether or not you're a good team isn't how tough your schedule is. It's how you do with that tough schedule. So I don't hear other coaches making excuses for the record. Sam Pittman's not that kind of guy. I look at next year's slate. I mean, Cincinnati's losing the house, Mike. Mm -hmm. You know, Arkansas's home slate is filled up next year. You get really good swings at a lot of teams at home, including LSU and Alabama and Ole Miss, you know, Mm -hmm. early in the year against South Carolina. So it's a favorable schedule. You know, I'm not worried about Petrina or Hugh Freeze. I think a trip to Utah to play BYU in the middle of the year might be tough. But I can see Arkansas building on an 8-4 and four year and winning as many as 9 or 10 games. And you've got some diet listeners who know their stuff. And before they say I'm crazy, you do the math, y'all. Arkansas is going to have as much returning talent as really any team they're facing on the schedule outside of Alabama. Mm-hmm. So um, I think it's going to be a really fun year getting ready for it, Mike. And, I mean, can we start 2022 right now? I'm ready. <laughs> let's go. September 3rd, come on, Cincinnati. Let's go. Well, one thing you tease, and then this is going to be the biggest storyline in the offseason, I think, there in Arkansas. Sam Pittman, contract extension talk. He, we all know he switched agents to Jimmy Sexton. And I don't know how, how aware you are of the backstory. I'm, I'm sure you probably know a lot, a lot all about this, but – you know, a big reason why Sam Pittman is the head coach at the University of Arkansas right now is because Hunter Juracek, you know, he's got fed up with these damn buyouts. We had the worst yep. head coach in the history of the SEC. We had to kick him to the curb, yet we had to give him all this money. And and Juracek's sitting here saying, why are we doing business this way? We cannot continue to do that. And, you know, they got Sam Pittman on a discount, let's be honest. But at the same time, you know, I think – from the time Sam Pittman's been hired to today, I think you can make the case that he's been the best head coach, not in not in the SEC. I'm talking about the country for the two year job he's done. So I'm conflicted here because I think the man deserves every penny he's going to get, but I also think that his success is largely based on his coordinators and the players, obviously. So I don't know if I'm Sam Pittman, I go to Arkansas and say. I want the highest assistant salary pool in the country to, to keep my elite coaches here, and I want the highest recruiting budget and pay me you know, what I'm worth, give me a raise. But I don't know. I'm, I'm a little – I'm a worried that he switched to Jimmy Sexton because J- Jimmy Sexton was the problem in the first place. And, and I know Sam Pittman's loyal to Arkansas, but I guarantee you I know Jimmy Sexton isn't. What, what's your thoughts on, uh, on this Sam Pittman contract extension? You know, I mean, if they paid me a little more money, maybe I'd have some real thoughts for Sam Pittman on it, right? Surely there's a slice of it for me or you in there. $50 million, (laughs) can you spare a couple? But no, in all seriousness, you're on point here with one of the big narratives in Razorback land right now, Mike. I mean, you sound like you live here. I mean, like literally is the guy who came in and said, it's not about the money. That's his brand, right? Mm -hmm. Not about the money. I love the hogs. I grew up in the area. I love the people. I got the, the dream house on the lake already there in Hot Springs. This is where I want to be. He comes in. He turns it around in two years like we started this conversation with. Now he goes back to Hunter Juris. At first, he fires his agent. You're right. The agent he's had for years, his family friend. He fires her, the gal who got him the job. And he hires Jimmy Sexton, Mr. Super Agent, Super Money, which means he's not messing around. And we go from $3.5 million a year to now, he wants $7 million a year. So – Look, is that a detriment to Sam Pittman's brand? Ah, Not really. 
I mean, I, I think it's a it's a deal where it's a sign of the times, Mike. Right, mm-hmm. right. To bring up Prince and a great song from back in the day, it's a sign of the times where if you want to compete with the big boys and be a top twenty five program regularly, you can't do it for chump change anymore. And this is a Joe Biden economy. Salaries are inflated naturally, right? We know mm-hmm. this. So when the guy down the block at Ole Miss is making nine million, and the guy over there at Auburn by way of Idaho is making seven, you know, and 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 Jimbo Fisher is making twelve. Sam Pittman looks in the mirror and says, "I beat these guys." Mike Leach is making eight and a half. I beat these guys. I need to make the same amount of money as these guys. I think Arkansas and Sam Pittman will get it done. But it is a fascinating scenario unfolding here for a guy who came in and said it wasn't about the money. Give me my money. Who's going to blame him for that? Right. Yeah. Like I said, he's worth every penny. I'm just, man, now that we're get, we're get, we're going down the rabbit hole that uh, got us in the issue in the first place, and, and I know that has got nothing to do with Sam Pittman, but I'm just wary because uh, I know for a fact Jimmy Sexton, he's even tried to steer assistance out of there. And uh, and now now we're we're kind of having a snake in a pit here. So I yeah. I hope it works out. Like I said, Sam Pittman deserves everything, but you got to take care of those assistants. Got to take care of, of bringing in elite talent because at the end of the day, as great as Sam Pittman is, uh, all those other factors have played a huge huge role for the Arkansas Razorbacks. But hey, JB, I really really appreciate you hopping on the line here and 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 touting up the Arkansas Razorbacks because like you said. Outside of that state, I, I feel like I'm one of the biggest homers of the Razorbacks out there, and not even I saw nine wins coming for this team. So I, I cannot imagine what next season is going to have with K.J. Jefferson and and this team coming back. I mean, we could be talking the glory years of Arkansas Razorbacks. No question about it. And, Mike, you know, I'll agree with you on this one. Your volunteers got totally screwed. In that, game. <laughs> that was ridiculous. I was at that game, and, uh, yeah, oh. yeah. I was right, oh. right there in the end zone, and mm, I'm still not over it. So thanks for bringing that up. I mean, it was a terrible call, but you run the ball <laughs> at the end of the game, you win the game. Anyway, I hate to digress. Mike, big fan. Look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks for having me on the podcast, buddy. All right, so just want to say thanks again, Josh, for joining the show. Really appreciate that. Went on a little deep dive here. I, I hope the Razorback fans really appreciated that little back and forth. JB's one of the best out there, so give him a follow there at RedZone921 on the Twitters. But that's going to do it for this episode of the show. Appreciate each and every one of you for hanging out. We'll catch you on the next one.